morning, everyone. My name is Mighty Stream. I'm going to do the March 17th spiritual principle a day in a meditation. Hope you're doing well this morning. The title of today's meditation is Service is Spirituality in Action. When we engage in selfless service, we find that all of the principles we have come to love and learn are called upon. It isn't easy to get out of our own way, but that is precisely what frees us from our self-made prisons. That comes from the Living Clean book, chapter three, Spirituality in Action. We hear a lot about the interpersonal difficulties that arose in that infamous NA business meeting. Perhaps too much is made of those times when there was too much talking or shouting and not enough listening, when fists flew or chairs were flung. Well, someone around here sure needs to practice some of the principles, we think. But sometimes the most pronounced ego in the room isn't an overtly sensitive newcomers or that revered old timers. Some tender soul who surely needs to practice unity, practice, and understanding. Sometimes the ego that's a ticking bomb is ours. We are the ones other members put on their resentment list and who sponsors advise. Pray for them. And being a sponsor will undoubtedly require practicing willingness, empathy, and acceptance. We worry that if we say, yes, I'll sponsor you, we'll mess them up worse. We're afraid of being too judgmental or not t attentive enough. What if they lie to us? What if they don't rather or won't do what we suggest? What if they think we suck as a sponsor and break up with us? We want to deflect the request, but do it in an enlightened manner. You'll be better off with a sponsor who can get out of their own way. Instead, we agree because that's how we were taught and that's how we want to live. Frankly, no one among us is able to practice principles in all of our affairs every minute of every day from now on until we are buried with the infinity medallion. But giving up ourselves, our time, energy, passion, and skills opens us up to endless opportunities to get out of our own way. Our character defect of selfishness takes a back seat to the spiritual principle of compassion for others. We practice courage and vulnerability by committing to something we've never done before. We practice surrender when we take someone through the 12 steps. Humility comes up too, and forgiveness. When someone we trust tells us the truth about how we behaved inappropriately in a business meeting. Today, I will take stock of the spiritual principles I'm practicing in my service commitments. If service is not currently part of my program, I'll practice accountability, participation, and discipline and get on it. Let's take a moment of silence followed by the wee version of serenity prayer. Moment of silence now, please. Thank you, God. Grant us the serenity to accept the things that we cannot change, the courage to change the things that we can, and the wisdom to know the difference just for today, please, and thank you. So we're talking about this spiritual principle of service, right? Being able to be of service to help us get out of our self-made prison. I know my experience has been really helpful. And there's probably been times I didn't do service, right? 
carrying the message to still suffering addicts, 12 step calls. Yeah, those are probably things that I, you know, just do without thinking of them really as service. So beyond that, I'm sure there were times that I didn't have some service position, some official service position. And I just used my own judgment, you know. Is this a good time to do service? Are you going to bring something to the table and make a meeting available without adding my personality all of the time, without having to cross share all the time, always having something to say after a person finishes sharing, uh, attempting to explain what they've said, attempting to give them advice or tell them exactly from the basic text where what they said was true or not true. Can I do service without feeling important or, and making it about me? That's always my question. And when I'm exhausted, when I'm tired and I'm lonely, hungry, those aren't really good times to do service. I've tried it. But however, I'm very intolerant right? Especially when it comes to people that seem to want to be distracted. You know, there's plenty of times my ego was the one that was noticed the most in the meeting. And you know, those are hard meetings to go back to. Go back to the meeting and humbly present yourself without having to justify or rationalize anything that you said the last time we were there, but still willing to change the behavior. Yeah, that's something that we all can work on. Today, we're going to work on that. Today, we're going to work, work on stepping outside of ourselves and helping the fellowship or still suffering addicts some kind of way without all of the fanfare, without all of the judgment, we can do it. We absolutely can. So today I want for you to be thinking, the meeting that I make the most, how can I be of assistance there? Maybe it's just cleaning the bathrooms. Maybe it's being a hugger. I shouldn't say just clean the bathrooms because that's a big deal. Most people don't go to a meeting thinking they need to get the bathroom together. But those of us who come in and barely can hold water, yeah, we're grateful to have a restroom that's really clean. And that's a small thing to talk about. It's another to do it. So today, take stock of the spiritual principles you're practicing in your service commitment. Analyze them, in other words. Are they spiritual principles that are worth having, that increase the atmosphere of recovery in some form or fashion, or does it detract? And if it detracts, it's probably technically not a, a spiritual principle that we want to hold on to. It's it's a, a negativity. It's a... Um, negative posture or behavior. It's a shortcoming that is initiated from the character defect of pride. And if it's one of those, of course, we don't need it or want it. But if it's a spiritual principle in the true sense of the word, right? What we're doing, what, how we're serving, Is positive, it has a positive effect on the fellowship. Those in our circle, that's what we want to do. We want to continue on in that vein. We want to do that. It's hard sometimes stepping out in faith and doing service work for the first time. It's an act that requires courage to take. And you can change your ability to be involved in service. So the serenity prayer is really helpful with this. Change the things that you can. It takes courage to do that. 
it takes courage to call someone up and say, hey, I was wondering if I could spot you, just follow you at the business meeting so I can learn how this goes. I want to start making the meetings. That more than, you know, more times than not, they'll probably say, yeah, follow me. <laughs> Watch what I do, because I like to step down from this, right? And it'd be nice to know that the person behind me understands what's involved. That's why a lot of our service positions have the word co, right? Co-chair, co-treasurer, co-secretary, co-chair of chairs, right? Why? Co-treasurer, a person that is the backup for the person with the position that has been trained to step in if the person with the position is unable to. So, I mean, if you want more wiggle room, you can get it, but you don't need it. This is a very simple meditation that is asking us to practice accountability, participation, and discipline. And I have every confidence that you can do it. I do it every day, my own small way. I do it every day. And I can't imagine a day without it. There's been better days. And there's been worse days. But for the most part, every day that I have is a great day. And I refuse not to express my gratitude for it. And my gratitude for N.A. My gratitude for God. Yeah, I don't want to be silent about those things. My name is Maddie Stream. I hope that you have a beautiful day on purpose.